Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar entitled Measuring Traditional PR in the Digital Age. This webinar is part of a special series of educational webinars to help you prepare for tomorrow. Please visit our website at teamlewis.com for recordings of previous webinars and to sign on for future sessions. My name is Sarah and I will be the moderator for today's event. A little bit about Lewis and who we are. We are a global integrated communications agency and we're the largest employee owned agency in our sector. We provide full PR, marketing, and digital services with 30 offices across the globe. You can find out more by visiting us at teamlewis.com. Now I'd like to introduce you to today's speakers. Um, we've got the Lewis Analytics team presenting today. And first up, we have Jason Methner. Jason has focused his career on delivering analytic-based strategy for a variety of enterprise clients and verticals such as automotive, technology, e-commerce, insurance, QSR, and finance. His outside the box approach to measurement has led to two David Ogilvy Research Awards. His belief is that data must express insights clearly and succinctly in ways that are just as creative as the ideas they activate. As VP of Analytics here at Lewis, his focuses include a specialization in web analytics, pay-per-click advertising, direct response communication, and increasing consumer loyalty through CRM activity. And next, we have James McKinney. James is Director of Analytics at Lewis. James has nearly 10 years of experience in the world of digital marketing with an emphasis in performance measurement, analytics, and digital strategy. James focuses on campaign planning, conversion optimization, attribution, and advanced tracking for almost all Lewis digital clients. And last but not least, we have Emily Beauregard. Emily is a web analytics strategist and has been working at Lewis for the last two years as a data analyst. Her specialty is in database management and she runs the company's business intelligence tool, business intelligence tool, Domo. In addition to data visualization and reporting, she also works with clients to set up conversion tracking and website testing. And with that, I pass the presentation over to the analytics team. Thank you, Sarah. So Team Lewis is Global, is a global PR agency that has been continuously growing for the last 23 years. And although primarily a PR agency, Lewis also has a digital team that measures the value of PR in a more accurate way than the traditional methods. How we measure PR here at Lewis takes a more direct approach that measures the impact and outcome that our PR team actually drives. And when PR meets digital, we are able to get in front of more readers and more accurately measure the influence an article has on a viewer. So thank you, Emily. Uh, we know that PR is a timeless methodology. Uh, we see that it earns credibility in the business world. And we know that the activities that our PR drive uh, go above and beyond what we see in the day to day. Uh, we know that there are connections between PR and those uh, PR activities drive business results for our clients through the practitioners and reporters that our uh, PR-based uh, activities target. And we also know that uh, public relations does a lot in changing brand perception. All of those are very soft activities which are incredibly difficult to measure. And that's why PR measurement has been such a challenge for the industry uh, throughout time. Uh, a lot of different historical areas have tried to measure PR. Uh, first and foremost, we have the uh, historical way of measuring PR called Advertising Value Equivalency, or ABE. Uh, and we have today uh, two main methodologies, first and foremost being uh, the analysis of resulting behaviors, and, and secondarily, the understanding of passive targeting by looking at different coverage opportunities and targeting uh, coverage with specific publications. Uh, Lewis has done a lot by working with the International Association for Measurement and Evaluation of Communication to really try and measure PR in a systematic way. Uh, our partnership with AMEC, the, Associ the Association for Measurement and Evaluation of Communication, is a strong partnership that's available uh, for anyone to see how we put forward our current measurement methodology today. However, our PR focused measurement leaves us wanting more. 
And that's why we're here today to discuss the webinar of areas that we've enhanced existing PR uh, through other digital activities, which we'll share later in the webinar. Uh, first and foremost, I want to ground us in what traditional PR measurement has looked like over history and give a nod to uh, where things have come and, and why we've gotten to this point today. Uh, traditional PR measurement started with advertising value equivalency as we kind of addressed previously. Ad value equivalency is the idea that uh, each piece of coverage as it's displayed in the media uh, can be measured with how much that equivalent coverage would be from a paid perspective. Uh, so in the newspaper example that you see before you, uh, traditionally people would measure how much newspaper coverage uh, by square footage you received in the newspaper and then equate that to how much an equivalent ad would cost uh, by placing that ad in the newspaper. Uh, the same goes for television based coverage or coverage through any other digital channel uh, as it comes out and is seen today. Obviously, there are a lot of challenges with that methodology as we've seen the media uh, landscape start to fragment and as different channels have come to fruition. Uh, ultimately, we know that ABE has challenges because with all of the different channels available to us for how to disseminate information today, uh, looking at square footage becomes challenging based on screen size and other variables. First and foremost, we know there's no standard formula. Uh, we also know that the credibility of coverage from an unbiased journalist far outweighs the inclusion of a paid message put together by an agency. So we know at its core, paid activity does not equal earned. However, we do know that paid has some advantages, particularly in the measurement area, which we'll address later in our webinar. Additionally, audience metrics for typical paid channels or even any kind of channels are, are typically estimated. So we see lots of estimation around uh, circulation, estimation around TV and how many people are exposed to television. And a lot of that is standard media practice, which has been done uh, year over year for quite some time. Uh, that activity is not flawed, but we understand that there are holes in measurement within those areas with which digital changes the game. So whereas audience metrics in terms of circulation and viewership are estimated using sample based methodologies, viewership within digital can be given with an exact methodology. So we know there are enhancements within digital, even within digital PR uh, that are available to us. The challenge obviously is that uh, the publication sharing that coverage doesn't always have an incentive to give you the information in terms of how many people your coverage reached. And then lastly, within ABE, ABE makes this assumption uh, that a user is going to take a behavior immediately. And so there is an assumption that in the effort to change behavior, we're driving a response. So that response could be a, a sign up form, a lead form, uh, purchasing a product. It could be going to a website and uh, finding out more information. All of that assumption uh, with AVE assumes a direct action that will happen right after the coverage is released. And we know human behavior doesn't work like that. We know that uh, behavior is not immediate and there could be a delay in behavior or it might take multiple pieces of stimuli to change that behavior. Ultimately, what we're really interested in is what behavior was changed because of the coverage and that behavior change not being immediate gets lost if it doesn't have an immediate response based on what we see with the stimuli put into the marketplace. And with digital, we have a cookie based methodology that can give us a longer window into looking to how behavior is changes change and what actions users are taking. So we definitely understand there's a lot more value within digital today. And we want to think about how uh, the AVE of past can be brought forward with some of the digital tactics that we have available to us. Moreover, the AVE question at its core is wrong. And we know that AVE is asking what is the value of an impression? Ultimately, we don't really care about how much an impression is worth with our PR coverage. 
what we want to understand is, is the coverage that we're putting forward and that we've achieved changing the behavior of the user as it's intended? Uh, and so this flaw was pointed out by Lewis uh, quite some time ago. And, you know, in partnership with the Association for Measurement and Evaluation of Communication with AMEC, we've worked really hard to put forward a new methodology uh, that is not as traditional with ABE, but really more fo focuses more, more on outcomes and the impact of PR. That methodology, uh, which you're looking at today, really focuses on what are the objectives and, and goals that you're trying to achieve with your communication, and then subsequently, how do we set KPIs to really identify what those goals are achieving? Obviously, we know our goal is to either drive more sales, or increase brand visibility, uh, increase brand affinity of our, our brand. What we then subsequently need to do is identify what are the key performance indicators we're going to use to measure those objectives. Uh, from there, we can really evaluate once PR has hit the marketplace, uh, if that coverage has changed our perceptions and if we've succeeded in altering those KPIs. Ultimately, uh, Lewis with Amec has produced uh, this really nice infographic, uh, which shows the impact of all of that PR approach, and then subsequently how you would want to prepare for PR and prepare for the measurement of that activity uh, by identifying uh, where coverage will change behavior and how that behavior can subsequently be measured, optimized, ref refined, and then revisited so you can identify if the plan needs to be changed or additional coverage should be sought to really continue enhancing whatever your plan objective may be. Ultimately, this is the approach that is used today across Lewis uh, for digital PR. However, we feel there's a, a great opportunity to really drive impact and be more influential in the marketplace using some of the digital tools that we have available to us. Uh, so with that, I'll pass it over to my colleague, James McKinney, and he can talk about digital and how using PR today, we can enhance that with digital tools. Thank you. Um, so yeah, AMEC is still absolutely one of the best approaches to traditional PR measurement. But as a tactic, PR is still fundamentally less measurable than digital. Uh, when it comes to one of the most important performance-based questions uh, that a marketer can answer, is my message actually getting in front of the right people? Uh, the best data scientist in the world uh, measuring PR can only say, probably, we're probably getting in front of the right people. On the digital side, we've grown to the point where we can say we are absolutely getting in front of the right people, and this is exactly what they're doing after they're exposed to our message. Um, if you think of the evolution of digital measurement that got us to the point where we can say absolutely, there really are a lot of similarities to where PR is today. Um, if you think back uh, several years for digital advertising, uh, it used to be uh, largely encompassed by site direct buys. The digital advertiser would directly go to the site administrator for the New York Times as an example and negotiate the ad placements on that website. Uh, that's a lot like how PR professionals today go to their contact at the New York Times and work together to get an article placed on the New York Times. But digital since then has been swept up, as everybody knows, by programmatic technology. So today the conversation and the measurement is much less about, is my ad on the right website? It's more about, is my ad in front of the right person at the right time, no matter what website they're on? Uh, so that's where the marriage between digital and PR starts to get really exciting because those weaknesses that PR has really can be supplemented and addressed by the strengths of digital. They work together really well. Um, so I think everybody recognizes this diagram. Um, in the past, the lines between paid media, earned, shared, and owned um, were really pretty um, stringent. Uh, but in the last several years, those lines have um, definitely blurred. If you think about every time you boost a post on social media, you are actively blurring the lines between 
paid and shared. But one of the lines that's been a little um, much slower to blur is the line between paid and earned, especially when you look specifically at PR and paid advertising. Uh, one of the reasons that's been so hesitant to blur is because of the age old conversation around the division between church and state that you'll hear a lot, obviously, in the PR world. Uh, but nevertheless, that line is blurring more and more. And actually, there's a lot of positive to it. That's why it's really um, exciting to see the opportunity for digital and PR to work together more closely. Um, so this, in reality, has already been happening to some degree. Um, you can see the marriage between digital and PR uh, with very basic examples that are pretty widely known and utilized uh, when it comes to web tracking codes, PR professionals, uh, are now looking for opportunities to get trackable links placed within their content. Um, web analytics tools measuring incoming traffic to your website from specific content that you've placed. Those tools are ubiquitous at this point. Um, the process of driving people to catered content on specific landing pages um, is definitely progress towards personalization. Uh, and of course, SEO and the focus of um, emphasizing certain keywords within that content so that you can draw more targeted website traffic. These are all things that are currently being done and are basic examples of digital plus PR. But that's not where it stops. Um, in fact, it gets much more sophisticated and much more interesting. Um, and the benefit there is that PR and digital together are much more than the sum of their parts. Um, and we can see that in two significant ways. When digital and PR work together, you see significant improvements when it comes to performance of each, and you see significant improvements in the way that you can measure that performance for each. One of the services, one of the digital focus services that we offer to um, some of our PR clients is what we call high octane PR. Um, and what that essentially is, is using digital media as a supplement to get more out of your traditional PR content. Um, so the name high octane, if you think about PR being your cool sports car and paid media being the high octane gas that you put in the gas tank, um, it really shows how they work together to augment performance for both. Um, high octane PR generally means that we're using paid media to bring more awareness and get more value out of our PR content. Um, if you think about PR, um, the vast majority of content um, is ephemeral. A story is very relevant for a short amount of time. Digital media can use um, paid ads um, through a variety of different tactics to bring more awareness to that valuable content for a much uh, longer amount of time. And we can also use paid media to motivate the people who are exposed to that content to take actions much more directly than we can with um, passive traditional PR. Uh, so the summary of, of what we look for, what we get out of this service, number one is active targeting. We can actively place the right message in front of the right person, the right time, the right place to get them to see your content. Um, we have much more ability to personalize our messaging when we get in front of those people. No two prospects are alike, so we shouldn't treat our communications uh, in a way where we assume that we have to speak to everybody the same way. We're also, we have more abilities to place actionable CTAs. We can nurture people through their decision journey, through remarketing copy, marketing automation, uh, website content, you name it, we can help guide them towards that purchase decision. Um, and like we, like we talked about, longer lifespan, we're addressing the issue of ephemerality for PR. Um, PR content like your workplace being named the best place to work, uh, awards, new lines of business that you're launching, that's all content that really only gets visibility for a short amount of time, but it's still relevant for um, years in many cases and digital can bring awareness to that for years. Um, yeah, so those are the, the 
main benefits of digital plus PR when we're specifically looking at um, the impact to performance. We also talked about how there are benefits to measurement as well. So Emily, you want to speak to those? Yep. So how digital is able to measure the success of the performance uh, that we're driving through these digital ads is that we are actually able to measure exactly how many viewers saw or read the article and how many times the article was put in their view. And with that, we are able to measure the influence that we directly uh, influence, I guess, from these users. And we're able to track them um, on how many times they saw or clicked through the ads or articles that we have in front of them. And with that, we're able to track the engagement that they took while interacting with our article. And most importantly, we're able to track the users who are opting in to view the article. Right. <clears throat> So kind of bringing it home and bringing it back together, uh, digital PR takes PR to the next level. And so when we combine digital paid media with digital PR coverage, we enhance PR and give it a lot of the tool set that PR currently lacks in the marketplace today. First and foremost, as James addressed, is this idea of active targeting. Right now, actively targeting users is not something that we can do with traditional PR. We go after specific coverage. We go after specific journalists. However, actively targeting users who we know we want to influence is not something that currently happens in the marketplace. We always have to go through the conduit of the media publication or whomever is broadcasting the message. When we combine paid media with digital PR, we can take the coverage piece that we've achieved and actually target the user we want to read that coverage piece. So we can buy paid media in those B2B publications and get in front of people to actually change their opinions, change their behavior, and see business results on behalf of our clients. As Emily addressed in the performance measurement section, we can really understand not only the subsequent behavior of that audience, but also track their behavior after they've been exposed to our message. So once we've been in front of someone with our PR coverage, if we're using paid media trackers, we have the ability to understand not only what they do after exposure, but also what else they were exposed to coming out of our integrated plan. So we can see how long it takes someone to convert, whether a conversion is reading more on a website, signing up for their, an email with their email address, purchasing a product, or even requesting more information. But we can also see, did we get in front of them with any other digital channel through which we're trying to produce uh, behavior change? We can see of our media plan, if digital is there, are we exposing them both to our PR coverage as well as to our paid media campaign in the more traditional paid media sense? That allows us to understand if those two tactics together really can uh, be more than the sum of their individual parts. And then lastly, with testing, we have the ability to test what messages we wanna use as we label coverage. So we can actually understand where in our website we wanna drive people, as well as what message will resonate best with specific types of audiences. As James addressed, we have the ability to really understand what message gets in front of the right person and what will resonate with that audience. By exposing people over time, we can really test what is most impactful and drive that message home so we have ability to take that back to our creative teams, take that back to our PR professionals to say, here are the messages that resonate and let's produce more coverage or more content in these specific areas. Ultimately, the combination of PR and digital from a paid perspective really drives home the win and gives us the measurement that we're looking for in an area where measurement, as we've pointed out, has a lot of weakness. Ultimately, Lewis's high-octane PR product is a best-in-class way to really amplify your PR coverage and focus on how to do right by your clients in multiple different ways. With that, uh, we're going to enter the Q&A section, and I'm going to pass it back to Ms. Sarah.
Great, thank you so much. Thanks, Jason, James, and Emily. Um, we can go ahead and take some time for questions now. Just a reminder, if you haven't done so already, please be sure to submit your questions by clicking the Q&A button in your taskbar. It looks like we have a couple of questions so we can get started. Uh, first question here is, can we use digital performance data to extrapolate PR's overall contribution? Yeah, uh, that's a very good question. Um, so if I'm understanding it correctly, we're, we're essentially asking if we have a piece of PR content that we know was put in front of 100,000 people, um, and then we use digital through something like high octane PR to drive a smaller sample, maybe a thousand people to that content. Uh, the people who stumbled upon it um, as they're browsing that publication site, um, they're the people who are driven from digital. We can measure their behavior. We can figure out after they read that article, if they engage with their brand, we can figure out if they're currently talking to somebody on our sales team. Um, so can we take that sample, look at those conversion rates, figure out how many of the people who saw that article actually took a desired action and extrapolate it to the population. Um, assume that those same rates, those same actions uh, happen to everybody who viewed the article, even people who stumbled upon it organically. So the rudimentary answer to that question is no, that's not a fair assumption that you can make. People who are choosing to leave the website that they're on um, click an ad and go to this content are showing us that they think this content is very relevant. They're more likely to be much more qualified prospects than people who just stumbled upon it as they're actively browsing a publication website. Um, so it's not an apples to apples comparison. Uh, what we can do though is when you set up a digital campaign to supplement PR, if you do it in a very precise way, uh, and you use, the, you use a lot of fancy math, basically, um, election polling, that kind of math, you can accurately say with, say, 95% certainty that because of this sample of digital, we are very confident that these are the performance metrics that we got out of the people who saw that PR content organically. Um, the way you set up that campaign, uh, the fancy math that goes into it, that's where it starts to get a little proprietary. Um, so we obviously don't need to get into that now, but it's definitely something we're more than happy to discuss one-on-one. Um, uh, -on -one. Great, thanks James. Um, next question, how accurate is tracking around digital paid media? Great, uh, Sarah, tracking actually is incredibly accurate around paid media. Uh, we have extensive experience setting up the infrastructure to be able to track paid media. And today, uh, we can get down to accuracy into the 99th percentile. Uh, there are situations where tracking is not accurate and people are using things like ad blockers or other blocking tools in their browsers. However, the majority of our audience uh, typically does not use those tools. And with that, we can really extrapolate how many people we expose to uh, down to uh, a final and finite number. Um, and then it looks like this might be the final question here. Um, this is great, but it clearly requires budget, which I don't have. How have you addressed the budget challenge with this approach? Great. Uh, our thought is that digital enhancement with paid media of high value coverage or that high octane PR idea should be an always on idea for all of our clients. And in order to really set aside budget, we want to bring this idea to the table for annual planning. We want to get uh, our clients to bring this forward and put together uh, budgets for what we want to invest in on an annual basis. And we want to set up the infrastructure needed to track it and really enhance it because when that high value coverage comes across or when your business needs a little oomph from whatever we can do uh, in the PR realm, we want to make sure that those successes can be amplified with digital activity. And so we recommend, you know, having those conversations early in the year during annual planning and really making sure that you're able to set aside some of those funds. We do know, however, that a lot of the PR professionals uh, who we work with don't always control the same budget that the digital team has access to. Oftentimes, 
uh, those different activities sit in different silos within the marketing organization. And our goal would be to bring this idea to the CMO. Uh, when the CMO has full visibility over to what's over what's going on, both from the digital activity side as well as from the PR side, uh, they can make the best decision for the organization and bring the organization closer together to align priorities across the PR and digital teams. So our focus would be having that idea brought forward to the CMO and really presenting a cohesive idea to show how an integrated media plan can take things to the next level and really amplify the successful coverage uh, the PR team is able to achieve. Very good. Thank you guys so much. Um, all right, guys, it looks like um, that's all the questions we have for today. Um, on the screen here, you'll see everyone's contact info. Please feel free to reach out to them directly with any questions you might have. Also, we have a few more webinars coming up in the series. To learn more, please visit our events page on our website at teamlewis.com. Thank you all very much for joining today's session. As mentioned at the start of the webinar, we will send everyone an email with a link to the recording of the presentation. Thanks again for joining us today and we hope to see you next time.